Super Mario Brothers Wonder has outshined Spider-Man 2 to the surprise of many. And to put it very simply, this is pretty much what Super Mario Brothers Wonder did to Spider-Man 2. <laughs> Whoop that ass, boy. Whoop that ass with that 93 Metacritic. It really, it really took a lot of people by surprise. Boy, I tell you, Bing AI is some hilarious shit. I tell you that. But I digress. Back to where the, the topic at matter here. Um, shockingly, um, Super Mario Brothers Wonder uh, rated very, very high. And so did Spider-Man 2. With a 93 overall for Metacritic and a 90 overall for Metacritic, respectively. Now, this puts into a question that why you clicked on this video. Are they Game of the Year contenders? And if so, which one is actually going to make it? So that's what we're about to talk about here today, real quick. Because with uh, Super Mario Brothers Wonder basically being one of the highest rated games of the year, and Spider-Man holding on to that 90, you know, that prestigious 90 overall Metacritic uh, review rating, um, it puts the 2023 game of the year in a very funny situation. Now, don't get me wrong. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is by far the number one contender and will most doubtedly, I'm not even going to say most doubtedly, undisputedly will win game of the year for 2023. But as far as everybody else that actually can get nominated for game of the year this year, these two games definitely put stuff in limbo. So things that were shoe-ins ain't really shoe-ins anymore. Things that was automatic ain't really automatic no more. I feel confident to say right now that Spider-Man 2 and Super Mario Brothers Wonder has definitely just fucked up the whole 2023 Game of the Year nomination process. And in turn of that fuck up, a lot of stuff is going to end up getting snubbed this year. And I think I have the definitive top six nominations because usually it's six nominations that goes on and most importantly i'm talking about you know the most talked about game awards show which is obviously the game awards uh but usually it's six nominations uh every year for game of the year and these two games definitely messed up that flow so i can tell you this right now Legend of Zelda is obviously the number one contender. It, it, it is going to win, but we got to figure out who's going to be actually in the fight. Who's going to be in this, uh, you know, six-way mayhem match for the 2023 game of the year. And uh, I think we can also just shoe in Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is the uh, second highest rated game of the year. I think it's very funny that, you know, the, you know, the bear sex game where you clap bear cheeks. Nobody really talked about how it fell. <laughs> below you know the reviews of legend of zelda breath of the wild but for the time it was rated higher than breath of the wild for about a week i mean for uh, rated higher than tears of the kingdom for about a week it seems like everybody named mama was writing the article but now that's no longer the case nobody's saying a word i think that's funny but nevertheless it is the second highest rated game of the year so you go ahead and shoot that in and uh all the pc nerds love that game for some reason, I don't know. But when it comes to a game where, you know, you absolutely, you know, got bears clapping human man cheeks, it's, it's something wrong. But I digress back to what we were talking about. Um, so, yeah, we have that. And the funny thing about it is something has to get snubbed. So we got Tears of the Kingdom. That's basically the number one contender. That's 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 shoe in. Uh, we got. Um, Baldur's Gate 3, which is a shoo-in. Now, these other four games are very, very up for a very, very uh, tough discussion. Simply because I'm not really sure what these other four are going to be. There's a process in where we have to figure out what these four is going to be. And I'm going to tell you in the heel truth way that I always do when I speak the game in gospel, what those other four that's going to contend with the game of the year for 2023 with Tears of the Kingdom and Baldur's Gate 3. And I don't think it's the games y'all think it's going to be. So what's going to really back up the evidence of what I have here and what I have to say about that is we're going to look at Metacritic and looking at the highest rated games of the year and look at how this is a situation where 
it can get really, really interesting and a lot of people are going to be kind of upset at what actually is probably going to go down uh, to, to, to be to be so so nice about it. So we have to, uh, in order to do that, we have to look up, you know, the, the highest rated games of the year. And, and, and as you can see, and as you can see, you got the GOAT, Tears of the Kingdom at number one, and then you got Baldur's Gate 3 at number number two. Now here's where it gets interesting because when it comes to these remasters and, and remakes, do you really put these games in, the, in Game of the Year category and put them up for Game of the Year nominations when you got games that uh, are very deserving? As you can see, Metroid Prime 4 and Resident Evil, uh, Metroid Prime rema Remake, not Metroid Prime 4, I'm ready for it just like y'all, just keep saying it, it just rolls off the tongue so easily, and Resident Evil 4 Remake at a 94 to 93 Metacritic respectively, one of the highest rated games of the year, uh, those two right there. Then you come down to Super Mario Brothers Wonder, just knocks everything, you know, surprises everybody, and it's legitimately the third highest rated game of the year speaking of new actual release games not remakes and then we come here with street fighter 6 at a 92 overall now this is interesting the last fighting game that got nominated for the game of the year was super smash brothers ultimate which also had uh had a metacritic of 93 so street fighter 6 has a 92 metacritic and, and the thing is there's two criteria you need to nominate to get nominated for game of the year you got to have critical critical success which is obviously with the reviews and you also got to have commercial success you got to have the sales to back this up and i think street fighter 6 definitely has the critical success and the commercial success and i believe this is one of the games that really should be nominated for game of the year if we're leaving out the remakes, I think the remake should have its own category. I think this year they're finally going to do it because it's just too much things out here that needs to get nominated for Game of the Year. And Street Fighter Six is definitely one of them. And as we go down, we got to talk about, you know, Diablo 4. Diablo 4 was definitely a critical success, as you can see, with a 91 overall. And it definitely was. It's a commercial success with, you know, the sales that it had over the summertime. So if we go down, it, it gets, gets more interesting. I see Spider-Man, you know, pulling in right there with that 90 then we hold to the next page and this will get interesting we got to talk about another remake with dead space then we got to talk about hi-fi rush then we got to bring up final fantasy 16 then we got to bring up pikmin 4 um then we have to bring up uh the obvious one which is uh starfield the big one for xbox the starfield one um and as you can see, that's that's quite a few games. And I think we have one more that I might be I might be overlooking. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm overlooking it or not. Uh, no, I think it, it ends it ends with there. Um, if, if Jedi Survivor was rated higher than it, then it would probably be considered for a game of the year nomination. But it's just not rated high enough. So I don't think that's really going to be in there at all to 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 be, you know, quite honest with you. So. When we look at all of that, right, and we try to figure this out, who's going to come away with, with this Game of the Year nomination? And I think it is, it's pretty simple to uh, put this in perspective real quick. Like, I'm going to tell you the ones it's going to be. And speaking specifically to the Game Awards, obviously there's more publications and award shows that give out Game of the Year. And we'll collectively see who all gets the nominations, who gets who gets to win at the end of the day. We know it's going to be Tears of the Kingdom, but, you know, this is a fun sake of argument here. So we, we, we know the Game Awards like to nominate six and we know the Game Awards like to have a representative from every console. So when we look at this, right. We know it's going to be Tears of the Kingdom. We know it's going to be Baldur's Gate three. That's 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 for certain. We know it's going to be them, too. Now, here's the interesting thing. I really damn sure see that Super Mario Brothers Wonder is definitely a shoe in at this point. Being the third rated, highest rated game of the year, it has to be. Now, I'm omitting the remakes to make this six nomination list. I'm omitting them. I'm not putting them in it. If the remakes are in there, then it's going to be a lot, a lot of, a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of sad, sad people um, when it comes to these, uh, if, the, if these remakes get in because if these remakes get in uh it's it's, it's not going to be it's not going to be nice it's not going to be nice it's not going to look good 
for for Spider-Man. It's not going to look good for um for Final Fantasy 16. It's not going to look good for Starfield. But the thing is, we know for sure they like to have a uh, they like to have a representative from every console. So you got Tears of the Kingdom in there. You got Super Mario Brothers Wonder in there. You got Baldur's Gate 3 in there for the PC guys. Now for the PlayStation guys, it has to be one or the other. Because we know Starfield is going to be nominated because it's a very, very big commercial success for Xbox. It has revived the Xbox brand this year alone by itself. Um, so you can go ahead and throw Starfield in there. So with that being said, that's uh, Tears of the Kingdom, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield. That's four out of six already. Now, here's the interesting thing. Do you give it to the remakes? Do you give it to Diablo 4? Do you give it to Street Fighter 6? Do you give it to Spider-Man? Or do you give it to Final Fantasy 16? Or do you give it to Hi-Fi Rush? That's what the thing is in. I'm telling you right now, Final Fantasy 16 and Spider-Man are not both going to make it. I'm going to go ahead on a limb and say Spider-Man is going to make it over Final Fantasy 16 because it's the higher, higher rated game. It's the, you know, the new hotness right now. What have you done for me lately? And it has set the highest selling record for a first party PlayStation title ever. So definitely commercial success, definitely uh, uh, critic success. So I think Spider-Man is going to be the fifth nominee. Now, the sixth nominee. To me, I fully believe is going to be Diablo 4. That is the six I think I'm going to go with. I don't know what y'all feel about that. Tell me what you feel about it. I think that's the six you're going to go with. I think uh, all the Final Fantasy 16 fans are going to be upset. Um, I think, you know, the, the PC guys are going to get a lot of love to this year with Baldur's Gate 3 and um, 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 Diablo 4. But if it ain't Diablo 4, it's definitely going to be Street Fighter 6. I think Capcom has done so great this year that you just cannot omit both of the big titles they put out to this year, Resident Evil 4 and Street Fighter 6. So they did so well this year, you you got to put one of them in there. And I, I, I'm i going to lean toward an actual new game, not actual remake in Street Fighter 6. So you know what? I, I'll take that back. I'll take Diablo 4 out and I'll put Street Fighter 6 in. So my 6 would be Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield, Spider-Man, um, Street Fighter Six. Uh, is that is that the six ones? Is that all six? Wait, hold up. Tears of the Kingdom, Baldur's Gate Three, Super Mario Brothers Wonder, Starfield, Spider Man, and Street Fighter Six. Those are going to be the six nominations for Game of the Year this year. Of course, you already know who's going to win, and that's that goat, Tears of the Kingdom. But hey, as long as everybody's in the running, that's all that matters. And I think this whole situation when it comes to a 2D Mario game really uh, shocking people like this, I think it opens up another situation, another can of worms where um, we got to talk about the top developers in this industry now. And with the success of Spider-Man and how Spider-Man came out, we got to talk about, you know, the top developers in the industry now. Who's that going to be? So let me know what y'all think about this. What is this game of the year 2023 situation going to look like when we come in December? You know, who's actually going to be six to come in? And can any game actually be beat Tears of the Kingdom? I doubt it. Because nobody was pushing the innovation that Tears of the Kingdom was doing. I, I, the Tears of the Kingdom is the most complete game probably ever created. And it probably is the greatest game of all time, period. So let me know. So if you didn't know, about the definitive 2023 game of the year nominations for this year <laughs> you just learned today because i give nothing but the heel truth so help me god